Hello, and welcome to My Adventure Reborn, a series of videos exploring the vast lore of Maple Story through the journey of our rising hero, Rog Slayer. This series tracks my warrior's progression as I attempt to become a mighty paladin and one by one defeat the many quests and bosses from Henzies to Tenebris and beyond. I'm reinventing the way I play by intentionally slowing the leveling process to complete the quests in each region and discover more about the story behind the game I've always loved. I hope you learn something along the way and do enjoy. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of My Adventure Reborn. I hope you guys are doing well and ready to relax your brain and just dive into the beautiful world of Elodin. So after seeing the witch that Anne of Elenia had described and following her to a cabin in the forest, we actually came face to face only to realize the woman cloaked in black was not a witch at all, but actually a fairy of Elenia named Ruena. And as you guys can see, Ruena starts recounting how she was walking alone in the forest when she runs into this baby bird. Uh, she talks about how the bird was crying and she wanted to cheer it up, so she actually tries to teach it how to speak to the trees through his song, only to realize the bird was an atrocious singer that was actually ruining her life. <laughs> Uh, and the primary reason for this is because all the residents of Alinea and people venturing near the South Forest are hearing these atrocious screams and wailing and attributing it to what they think is a witch. So after completing a few small tasks for Ruena, she decides she'll talk to you and tells us she's very upset that she is the one being blamed for all the ruckus and racket that's going on at night in the South Forest. And as a result, she actually wants you to go out into the forest and kill Howlets uh, and these thorny brambles for placing the blame on her which I thought was pretty insane. I mean, here's a fairy of Alinea who's asking you to go to go homicidal on these birds because she's upset that she was blamed. Uh, but, you know, being an adventurer and having no particular allegiance to the thorny brambles, I acquiesced. And when we get back to her, she basically says, that's okay, but I need more blood on my hands. So she sends you after these blue foxes and red foxes as well. Luckily for Ruena, I need the EXP, and as you guys can see, these were actually not bad at all for training. That's the beauty about some of these quest spots is, yeah, they're not optimal EXP, but they're still monsters around your level, and the training's not bad. So I head back to Ruena, and she's happy to find out I've exacted her revenge, extracted her revenge on the outsiding forest. Um, but she does mention that she's very worried and needs our help once again. This time to check in on a giant songbird, a shimmering songbird as she puts it of Elodin, that lives deep in the forest. She's basically worried because she knows that the forest is becoming extremely hostile and hasn't heard this bird sing in a long time. So she needs you to check in. And look at this gorgeous map, guys. I mean, when I saw these lotus flowers, I was tripping out, they're beautiful. The whole area of Elodin is just gorgeous. I definitely wanna save a couple of these maps. Um, that's, that's what I'll get a hyper teleport rock for. I'll get it just to save a couple of these maps so I can do cube sashes or just AFK on them later. I'm a big fan of that. I mean, just having a couple keen little spots you can go chill. So we do find this shimmering songbird and she does mention she actually knows of Ruena and is quite fond of her but hasn't been able to sing because her voice is really dry and she's coughing. So she asks us to go find some of the water spirits in the nearby lake and lotus flowers and recover enough pure water to fill this small bottle. And as you guys can see here, at first I didn't actually know what I was gonna do with the small bottle. I just ran, I literally collected them and just ran back assuming the quest would be done and didn't consider I would have to actually manually fill the bottle. Um, but I figured it out and she was happy to receive it. After explaining the situation with Ruena and the sounds in the forest and this baby bird, the shimmering songbird decides she wants to help. So she tells me to go back and retrieve the baby bird from Ruena so she can teach it how to sing. 
So I come back only to find out that the baby bird is actually the long lost child of the songbird. Like what? <laughs> but nonetheless, this beautiful cute cutscene uh, where the baby bird's saying how much, much she misses her mother. Uh, I love these like hyper positive, like hyper beautiful stories that Mabel comes up with. It's really one of the reasons why I play the game. It just puts me in a good mood. Not to mention, this is the ideal situation for everyone involved. Rowena doesn't have to teach the bird, she gets rid of the bird, the songbird finds her child, it's just, it's perfect. So the songbird is very grateful for our help and for Rowena, but um, wants to get started with these singing lessons so that the horrible noises in the forest start. So I go back, once again, another kill quest, and retrieve the pure water, followed by these lotus flowers, which are so gorgeous. They need to make these into a chair, okay? We got so many giant, hideous chairs in Henzies. Like the concert chairs, they're absolutely atrocious. We need to focus on these beautiful little details like this. That would be a nice one. So I collect them, it was only 10, and then head back to the shimmery songbird. And uh, as you guys can hear, uh, it doesn't help at all. Even the mom is like just disgusted by these horrible screeches. She tells him to stop. And the whole time my character is like dropping these low key insults. Uh, he, I think he even says something like, oh, that's a screech only a mother could love. Yeah, yeah, right there. So, you know, I guess all our efforts were for naught, but at the very least, a mother and her child were reunited. So she asks us for more droplets, which, okay, guys, I understand that quests in Maple Story are repetitive, but on a couple of these, it just seems completely mind-numbing. Like, <laughs> they don't need to ask you twice to go get these, these things, right? Like, one quest retrieving the pure water was enough. I did it, like, three times. But still, the story overall, really nice. Um, so Rowena pops up out of nowhere, and the baby bird is very happy to see her, as well as the mother. Uh, Rowena, you know, is absolutely ecstatic that they were reunited, and doesn't seem to care whatsoever that she's basically been raising the bird. I personally think she just wants the bird out of her head uh, and out of her house altogether. <laughs> but with one last chance in front of a full audience, the baby bird makes a very um, unsuccessful attempt at singing and that about ends our attempts to make it any better. So I had this conversation with Rowena and finally I'm able to actually tell her the reason I came was because of this young girl Anne in Alinea. It seems like Rowena feels genuinely terrible about having accidentally become the nightmare fuel for this young girl Anne of Alinea. Uh, but mentions that Elidin is genuinely a really nice place and that we should tell the other fairies to come visit sometime as well as say goodbye to the baby bird, which we do. <laughs> it says come sometime and I'll sing for you. I doubt we'll be doing that. Uh, but nonetheless, the story of Elidin is concluded. Rowena no longer has to deal with the baby bird. It's reunited with its mother. Um, unfortunately, it still doesn't know how to sing. <laughs> But with that, I had to head back to Alinea and share my story of the Southern Forest with the others. So I talked to Arwen and then with Rowan, and they were both quite happy to hear from me and also happy to hear Rowena was doing well. They actually mentioned they knew her and thought they should probably pay her a visit sometime before instructing me to go tell Anne what had happened, which I did. Now, Anne, I initially thought was a fairy because she's in Alinea, but I think she's actually just a small human child, maybe the child of Betty. And she just listens to our story and talks about how she wants to be brave like us one day, but is incredibly relieved to find out that she can continue her life and there is no witch of the Southern Forest. Overall, uh, I would say Elodin was a really enjoyable themed dungeon, primarily because of the environment. The quest was typical, but I just think the design of Elodin in general, as well as the mobs and the music, is just so nice. After each one of these quests, I'm trying to go through my inventory and sort it out to see what I actually have. Uh, which I was happy to find a couple direct increases, one being this golden mole, which is not only one of the most OG and badass looking malls in the game, 
but it also is better than what I currently have. So that was nice. I'm not really concerned with gearing, primarily because all I want to do is have as much fun as possible. So if I see a fucking badass OG weapon, I'm going to use it, even if it's worse than, you know, whatever I currently have in my inventory. And for most of these quests and theme dungeons, specifically at the low level, you don't need any damage. I'm pretty much 10, 15 levels above the highest uh, monster I've run into so far. So for now, I would say damage is more of a means to an end to whatever I need to be doing. Obviously, I'm going to get stronger and upgrade my gear uh, as I need to to require to fit the content, but I want the sense of exploration and I want a chance to see new content. So that's why I decided to get started on these profession quests. Not only are they quests, um, but I know later down the line I could maybe use them to get like the Japanese set from... Um, uh, Ranmaru, uh, and I'm pretty sure that set is actually better than Penslar and a lot of the other gear that I'm going to have at that level anyway. So, at the very least, it will provide an opportunity for me to check out the professions, get into them a little bit, and also make some cool gear sets that a lot of people on Reboot don't even have. And that's going to be it, guys. Until next episode, where we're going to dive on into Rihanna Strait, another theme dungeon here in MapleStory. So until next time, happy mapling.